Yeah, so this is pretty confusing. Like uh, this guy, right? He asked me, he's a Nevar eh, from the Nevar community, and he was confused about something, and he comes to ask me this question. Right? He says, okay, when the Nevars are doing puja of Ganesh, they are doing puja with alcohol instead of water, right? With meat and eggs and all this kind of thing. They offer to Ganesh and do puja. And they have been doing this for eons, like ages. <laughs> right. And then the, on the other side, I see that the Hindus, the Brahmins, they are going to the same temple that is Ganesh temples. And then they are doing their puja. And in the puja, they are offering water, milk, you know, incense, fruits, incense, flowers. They have flowers and doing puja like that, you know. So this will become confusing to anyone who, who is ignorant, who does not have the understanding of really what is happening in the dharma. Right? And they have been totally misled. Because all these uh, deities that the Hindus have, they are all the Devpalas in the Buddhist history. In Mahayana, in Vajrayana, you can see a whole lot of them, right? So they're the protectors. Protectors. And they were wrathful be beings. Wrathful beings. You know? And they were, they were uh, created by the, uh, sorry, the Bodhisattvas. Right? Like Padma Pani has, is said to have created this entity. Ten yes. Dharma Palas. Yes, the ten Dharma Palas to protect the Dharmas. So he created them to protect. So, so they are very wrathful. Prior to that, Shiva, Lakshmi, and the whole Hindu pantheon of gods did not exist. No. We don't find any evidence of them in the Vedas, Nothing. the early Upanishads. Nothing. It was all Buddhist. It deities and, uh, and with then, the Mahayana, yeah. and then they were kind of co-opted and transformed into by the Brahmins when they came yeah. back into power. Yeah. So Avalokiteshvara is actually Shiva. That is what it is. Tara is really the only main female deity yes. who then became. Parvati, Durga, and you can and all see the that. Also, I last time I showed you goddesses. those figures, those statues. Uh, I mean, the relics, the Buddhist relics, very ancient from South India, and uh, even from another place, right? With Mahamaya, <laughs> Mahamaya is sitting there, and the elephants are offering, tea, giving her a bath. You know, right? Well, the two elephants on the side, they are giving her a bath, and that is Mahamaya. <laughs> Right. Right. And these people have totally transformed, you know, Mahamaya into what? Into Lakshmi. <laughs> if you look at the photographs of Lakshmi, because they have only photos, okay? They have only paintings that they have painted. They have only writings, right? But they don't have any definite, authentic, archaeological evidence at all. No material culture, just myths. It's just myth. We don't find anything till now. And they just, whatever find is there, they try to always make it into there. Like recently, the Rajgiri excavation. They found chariots and, you know, swords and this thing there. Where was that? This is Rajgiri. You know, this is like Mahinjodaro, Harappa, the same. Oh, area. Yeah. And this is recent excavation. And the structures that they find there are mostly Buddhist relics. You know? And these people are claiming that this is, oh, you know, these are the facts. This is the chariots. The, okay. Yeah. And you, you remember that they found in uh, Harappa, right? The seal. The Pashupati seal. Yeah, they call it the seal. Now they call it the Pasupati seal. They are putting this word there, Pasupati. Pasupata. Yeah. Right? And they're bringing this word and joining it with the seal. Yeah. And they're claiming it to be Pasupati. Rudra. Rudra, their you know, entity. But that's absolutely not right. Because those with a clear mind, 
with a clear conscience, if they look at the seal, then you can see there a person there, a yogi there, who's in a perfect yoga asana, right? And a very complicated asana, that is, mm. right? And he is in that asana, he's sitting Mula there. Band asana. asana. Yeah. yeah. And then all around him, you can see the figures of animals. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that's why these guys, they said, okay, Pasupati, because they are animals. Lord of the animals. The Lord of the animals. But the actual Lord of the animal, who is the actual Lord of the animal, is Buddha. <laughs> it's Shakyamuni Buddha. All the animals came and sat with him because they loved his aura. They loved his peace and his, you know, compassion. He was Anybody so comp who's accomplished in yes. Ahimsa will have the same result. Yes, anyone who has Ahimsa in his mind, you know, all the animals are their friends. Yeah. You know, they absolutely merge in his aura. So that was there in the seal, like you can see the animals and then this guy, you know, in a real yogic mool bandha, you know, yoga asana is so sitting there. So they say it's a prototype of Shiva, mm. but it's a prototype of Avalokiteshwara. Something else, it's not like what they claim, what they have created, I mean, like Shiva. You know? Right. And uh, I mean, when did Shiva first, when did that personage appear in texts? It wasn't until Tantra, you know, which is medieval times, somewhere between the 5th and 12th. Yeah, I'll tell you exactly. 9th century, right? Yeah, because uh, Tantra was very prevalent that time, right? Tantra was absolutely experimenting with nature, the energy of nature, the energy of water, the energy of the wind, the energy of the sun, the energy of the moon, you know, the energy of the plants that were around there, you know, right. everything, you know, the energy of the river, the pond, everything that was natural there, you know, the mountains. So this was Tantra, right? And people were experimenting with these things and then they were finding things. Well, it's also shamanism. Yeah, the shamanism I mean, is similar. Tantra. Yeah, that is shamanism, the shamans and shamanism. Now this word it comes from the West, right? It's not Sanskrit word. It's shamans. So the shamans were also tantrics, you know, in our world. Sure. Right. In our version of yeah, because the they could transform we, energy. We, we call it tantra, right. and that was shamanism in the West, mm -hmm. and that was absolutely nature. Yeah. Right. They were invoking the gods of the wind. They were invoking the gods of the fire. They were invoking the gods of the forest. Mm -hmm. You know. So it was all tantra at that time. People were experimenting. That was the stage, and that that came into a thing called tantra. Right. Right. Specifically with male, female, yes. Shiva, Shakti yes. energy, and then the Shakti and the Sakya, energy. Right. Then um, people started realizing this. Right. What is this? What is this union thing? You know. Yeah. Uh, what is this male and female union? Because really, like uh, um, celebrating, worshiping the earth, yes, is Obviously, the oldest form of it. It was there because that they have this, right? You know, every, even in the Rig Veda, right? And know, even prior to that, at Mahanjo Daro, there's seals of, you know, the female hanging onto yes. the tree. Yes, all this symbols, like the yakshas can, at yeah. Sanchi. And yeah, they were all. There were all Nagas and Yakshas there right. in Mahinjo Daru and Harappa. That was the civilized, it was Buddhist, and they were highly civilized. And uh, they early had, Dravidians? Yes, and they, they were the Dravidians. And they had, they were the Nagas and the Yakshas, you know. And the they were Kyrits. so civilized, and they had so much power at that time the power of trade and economy in their hands, right? They were trading with the world at that time, you know. All the spices that they produced. It was wonderful, you know, there were no spices in other places. People fell in love with the spices. Right. So and all the textiles. Things, yeah. Because this is what the area saw in the Gangetic Plains, you know. They right. said, wow, such a rich country. You know, so productive. So that's why they dominated the people and they captured their lands, destroyed their culture, you know, and they started. The Aryans. Yeah, they, they started their philosophy. They started writing the other books, like they call the Yajur Ved, the Sam Ved, you know, the three other books yep. that were written after Buddha, you know. Yajur Ved. Totally. After Buddha, it is. Before Buddha. Yeah. 200 years. Yeah. The only book they had was the Rig Veda. And in Rig Veda, if you read, it's all about the nature and thing. And then there you can see Indra. Indra is so violent there. 
right? I can show you the verses if somebody brings okay, you anything. Okay, hang on a sec. 